there is a different frequency, there is a different je ne sais quoi that I find very difficult to put my finger on, but it's very common at that level of athlete. I think the same is true for you know, many of the greatest entrepreneurs or many of the greatest artists. And I'm wondering, can you put a finger on that thing? What is the thing that unites them other than just a passion for excellence and a desire to be great at their craft? Yeah, I think, I think there's a couple of things. And I think, you know, there's things like all of them in my, you know, they, they obsess over things for sure. You know, the process, it's the small details, um, but, you know, there's also, it's the chip, it's the chip on the shoulder, you know, Tom Brady, you know, up until the very end, thought of himself as the 199th pick, he was this, he always found little things to mentally almost like play tricks on himself, like to um, convince himself that he was a sort of the underdog, um, Serena Williams, who, you know, by all accounts is the greatest ever, the like, greatest I ever. Heard, <laughs> in her mind. She always thought, no, like I'm, you know, on the outside looking in. I'm not supposed to be here. You know, I'm the little girl from Compton. Nobody wants me here. You know, and they they sort of play these mental tricks on themselves to challenge themselves. Because, you know, especially when you get later in your career and when you are kind of established as the GOAT, you have to find, you know, the repetition is hard. Like that's that's what all these athletes talk about is just like the boredom. Like how do you keep at it how do you keep doing the same thing and so you have to find ways to sort of challenge yourself so i'd say that's one thing like they have this gift you know of um you know lebron james to this day like he hears all the comparisons to michael jordan people who sort of say oh no he hasn't reached that level and so he's constantly challenging himself um i think uh you know steph curry grew up he was the kid who was too small oh his dad was you know in the nba he was you know born with the silver spoon in his mouth you know he didn't get into the big time colleges he had to go to davidson he dropped in the draft <laughs> these are the stories you know they sort of tell themselves to keep on challenging themselves let's say that's one thing and then the other thing is actually not mystical or whatever it's they do the work they do the work you know All those people I just listed, if you ask them, like, what's the quality that differentiates them from everyone else, you know, because when you get to the pros, like everyone's talented, everyone is elite, everyone is gifted. So what is the quality that really separates them? They'll all say, it's my will, it's my mental toughness, it's my ability to keep on going, it's my ability to get up, you know, when, when, you know, failure, to be resilient. Um, Serena said to me, um, I said, you know, what's the thing that differentiates you from everyone else? And she said, oh, it's my will to work. She's like, I can't tell you how many times I I woke up in the morning not wanting to go out and hit balls, you know, practice. I also can't tell you a single time that I didn't. I just, you know, it's like, that's it. It's it's the work ethic, you know, and it's just like that unwillingness. You know, I used to go to training sessions with Kobe Bryant at 4.30 in the morning. He just was like, that's just the way he was wired, you know, and it it was different. And that's what differentiated him from everyone else. So um, I think, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in like, you know, because I am obsessed with like peak performance and flow state and being in the zone. And certainly that's the product. But part of the formula is just going the repetition and doing it over and over and over and over again. Um, I was with Tom Brady, I think, like, you know, he was in like year 17 or 18, like so far into his career, had won so many Super Bowls, was obsessed. He's in the back of his uh, house. This is when he lived in Brookline in his backyard, I think in April. This was like literally weeks after he had orchestrated the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history when, you know, the Patriots came back against the Falcons and won the Super Bowl. We're weeks later and he's in the backyard with a helmet on and shoulder pads with his dog running around, like trying to sort of, you know, perfect his throwing motion. He just wasn't satisfied. He was like, oh, there's still more. There's more for me to achieve. I can still perfect this, you know, and it's just, it's like, it's a mad scientist, you know, and I also sort of found that fascinating.